can I help you? Hey, uh, my friend was here earlier. Um, bald fella, about so tall. So I was wondering if there's maybe something that, you know, my friend missed. Maybe you should just call your friend. I did, and you know, he told me to come back and take another look. I, I'd really appreciate it. I can't. I'm sorry. You better just call the police. God damn sure. it! It's wrong time to take a stand. He about to put the blick to you, like. Oh no! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's like a horror film. Look at him. Man, if you don't get the fuck out of here, <laughs> what the fuck? About to go look at which ones he picked up. Evening, bist du schon gelandet? Is this Werner? Yes. Who is this? I'm calling on behalf of Gustavo Fring. It's Mr. Fring. God damn. Upset. What do you think? The letter has specific instructions. My men will be able to continue a few days without me. The work will go on. Ask Michael. Michael's very busy, and he asked me to speak with you. They are to finish clearing the debris, then begin the south wall. That's the south wall? The south wall? Kai will not... The concrete form? Sorry, I didn't oh, get that. Oh, they got to kill part. you. Could you repeat that? Werner? Oh, Mr. Ziegler. Werner Ziegler. Michael, is that you? I'm so sorry. If Get I... dressed, Michael. I, I don't want to hear another damn word out of you. Like you signed up for it, dog. Jimmy, the hard part's done. Reading room, scholarship, cemetery. By now, they've got to have heard about some of it. We set up the dominoes, and now you just knock them down. <sighs> I can say whatever I want. <laughs> To the board, I'm still that guy. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it didn't matter what he said. I gotta, I gotta keep it real. What if Chuck isn't talking for me? And where was he? A place called Dulce Vega Hot Springs up in UMass. It's got to be where his wife is headed. Uh, Something else. Oh. Uh, yes. When I found him, he was on the phone with an interested party, pretending to be one of your guys. All right, I'll bring him in now. No, keep him there. Wait. I'd go another way. That I know. That'd be a mistake. This discussion serves no purpose. Wait where you are. I'll take care of it. Are you sure? Yes. I want to know what your end game was. What did you think was going to happen? I thought I would come back and my friend Michael would be oh, very, very no. angry. But in time, he oh. would understand and forgive. It was never up to me. Soon she would be at the motel, please. Take me back there. Let us be together for a little, huh? Ah, please, Michael. I go back now. I go back in the morning. What difference can it make? It's not going to happen. He, he still don't get it. Let me speak to Mr. Fring. I will explain everything. Oh, no. I will make him understand. You're not going to talk to Fring. If Werner, I nothing you can say or do will make anyone trust you again. I will go home. I will never breathe the word of this ever. <laughs> Oh, you damn sure won't be breathing any other words either. I give all of it back. She landed an hour ago. But she knows nothing. And you need to keep it that way. She's followed? She goes back to the airport, nothing will happen to her. Surely they could not, they would you not. Pull yourself together. She can't suspect. It doesn't matter what you tell her as long as she goes back where she belongs. Ich habe ganz schlechte Nachrichten. Es gibt ein Problem auf der Baustelle. Ja, die haben mich zurückgerufen, weißt du? Ich bin nicht im Hotel und ich bin überhaupt gar nicht in New Mexico. Deshalb musst du zurück nach Hause mit dem nächsten Flug. Margarete, hör mir zu. Jetzt halt die Klappe! Du musst zurück nach Hause. Nein, das kommt überhaupt nicht in Frage. Das ist meine Arbeit, das muss ich machen. Und ich will dich auch überhaupt nicht sehen, Margarete. Ich will dich nicht sehen, ja? Also, fahr zurück nach Hause, sofort, jetzt! That's crazy for that to be the last conversation they have. And he don't know if it's actually going to work because she, you know, woman come all the way across the goddamn world. It'll be a story, an accident. Her questions will be answered. Did you swear? Yes, I swear. And my men? They're going home. 
They'll be okay. They're trusted. Is there no other way, truly? There are so many stars visible in New Mexico. I will walk out there to get a better look. I feel like we've been talking about this forever. <laughs> now, here it is. An architectural feat. To have Ziggler get popped, right? Such a heartbreaking death. And then cut directly to Gale. <laughs> like, yo, like, I'm watching it and it didn't even hit me what they, what they did until just right this moment. Uh, ventilation at this point is the main hurdle. But with a series of fans and the right equipment, I am certain that I could do a rudimentary cook at the very least. Not until it is ready. Oh, hello. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I, I don't have a prepared statement, but I do have this. I have left many things unsaid in our relationship through the years. Rather than allow these unspoken thoughts to die with me, I've chosen to record them here for you. I hope you will take my words in the spirit in which they are intended. I remember quite clearly the day you came home from the hospital. You can't imagine the joy on mom's face. I can honestly say I never saw her happier. I'm sorry, I can't do this. Okay. Listen, my brother Chuck, you, you knew him. He loved me in his own way. He loved me as a brother. He did not love me as a lawyer. And all my life, I've wanted to make him proud. Climbing Everest without supplies. If you were one of the lucky few who reached that peak, even for a moment, if you made him proud, wow. But if you weren't one of those people, hey, he was polite enough, but he did not suffer fools, you know? Could be a real son of a bitch. <laughs> Chuck was the one who was always right. For me to live up to the standards of Charles McGill, I'll never be as moral as him. I'll never be as smart. I'll never be as respected. I'll never be as good as Chuck. But I can try. I'll do everything in my power to be worthy of the name McGill. And if you decide I'm not a lawyer, doesn't matter. I'll still try to be the best man that I can be. And I gotta believe that somehow, somehow he knows. Oh, that's. I'm gonna get to this in a review. That no, look. I have to do it for me. Oh, my face is not about Jimmy. Sorry. It's about this situation. The fact that they had to be moved to tears in order to give him his shit back is bullshit to me. I knew you could do it. I knew you could. Like, fuck them. So I mean, yes, they, they have to reinstate you. Know, uh, right? Yeah, they have did to. you see those suckers? That one asshole was crying. He had actual tears. Jesus, Kim. Listen, I started reading the letter and I just knew it wasn't. I could tell by their faces it wasn't going to be enough. Boom! I sunk the hook in. I'm so lucky. We're going to get to it in a review. Letter. God, I could see the matrix, you know? And you were right. You were right. It was all about Chuck the whole time. Oh, Mr. McGill, you're still here. There's some good news. Just believe me, I already know. Oh, and sweetheart, I'm going to need one more form. Uh, DBA. Because I'm not going to be practicing under the name McGill, so. Shouldn't be a problem. Jimmy, Jimmy, what? It's all good, man. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, first, let me start by saying don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are subscribed, make sure to hit the notification bell. Shout out to all the new viewers. Shout out to all the subscribers. And I started a Patreon with full-length early reactions to things like this. If you'd like to, check it out. So first, I want to talk about that look on my face. The look on my face was, I had already said when they did that little pre- sort of uh uh briefing or whatever it was in order to give the recommendation to the actual panel i said i felt like no matter what they were going to think that this man is being insincere because if he brought up his brother they'd be like okay he's being insincere about his brother so the look on my face was believe me i fucked with everything jimmy was saying 
I understood it. But the look on my face was, this really what they wanted to hear? They didn't just want contrition. They wanted this man to like, up, like hold his brother upon high. And then it, it's like hitting me like, oh, wait, I, I mistook it. His brother had so much clout amongst the lawyer community, but they resented Jimmy because of what transpired with him. And that's what I got from that. And the reason is, what the fuck did any of that shit that he said that we liked, that we found to be sentimental, that we thought was Jimmy finally having a breakthrough, what the fuck did any of that have to do with them? Or that situation? He just said a bunch of, to us, it was dope because we watched them. The, uh, we've, we've watched the narrative of the, sh of like his situation. We've seen his motivations and we've seen what sort of got Jimmy to this point. We're trying to witness him turn into Saul Goodman. And so that speech he gave us alongside Kim, we like, yo, he had a breakthrough. But to see me up, th to see them, that panel up there, like, touched and moved, it's like, to y'all, that should have been a bunch of nothing. What the fuck does his relationship with Chuck have to do with the actual lawyer shit? Oh, I see what they want. <laughs> it's fun. The reason why I'm like, yes, is because, oh, he figured it out too. Because I'm sitting there like, this is a bunch of, <laughs> what? Now, let's go back. Us alongside Kim, we're sitting there like, yo, breakthrough. That's what's the writing on that specific part is interesting to me. Because who says that that panel is just going to be upstanding and right and call it fair? Nah, they humans. They got their own biases and their own narratives and shit. So they felt that same way about Jimmy that Chuck felt about Jimmy. And I just I never even thought about it that way. But in my mind, I was thinking, okay, so if he just shows them that he's willing to be a better lawyer and do all this, they're going to call it fair. But I never considered that, yo, no, 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 no. They worried about you and Chuck. Because in my mind, I'm like, what the fuck does his relationship with his brother, like, the situation that happened is the situation, but y'all lawyers who work in law, that situation was that situation. All the other, the tentacles and the, the brother, and I, I just want to be a better person uh, because of my brother. Fuck that got to do with y'all. <laughs> like what? But they needed to hear that. And Jimmy, it finally clicked for him. He was like, oh, they want some horse shit. <laughs> Shout out to Jimmy. Jimmy realized they wanted horse shit. Us and Kim, we like, oh, yo, he had a breakthrough finally, right? Because we saw him crying in that car and then we see this scene and we're like, yo, finally. And when he's like, got those assholes, it's like, like I couldn't, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. he. He understood it was just about the bullshit because what the fuck him coming in there and saying some professional shit. Nah, they wanted to hear him say some touching, emotional, pull it, pull at the heartstring shit. Now, mind you, he had just this how fire what Saul did at that moment. Saul, this is why that's fire. He, he goes to read the letter and he goes, you know what? I was going to try to pull at you guys' heartstrings. And he does his hustle thing. He makes your mind make the move. So when he says, I, I was going to pull at your heartstrings, they're now listening to his new shit, not even realizing he's pulling at your heartstrings. <laughs> I fucked with it. Jimmy was doing them. I mean, he... Saul was busting their motherfucking head. Like they they didn't even realize it. Oh, he's like, Y'all want the horse shit? I got you. The motherfucker did it to us, the viewer, and to Kim also. Cause Kim had she like Now, let's get into Kim. Oh boy, it's hot as fuck in here. Boy, I got the crew neck on because I'm about to go turn the heater off. I'm sweating in this bitch. 
I gotta. Well, I'm about to use my wife beater. <laughs> Uh, anyway, because my face is shot like a motherfucker. All right. So anyway, Kim. Kim, ever since Chuck died, she's been worried about Jimmy's reaction to the death this entire time. And so have we. We, Us and Kim, we're... Because in our mind... We're taught that not just in real life, that's the way it needs to go. But we're thinking in the show's sort of terms, like, yeah, at some point he's going to break and, you know, have this sort of profound thought and, and it's going to, it's finally going to hit him. Cause that's what we're fed. We're fed a bunch of horse shit by Hollywood. A lot of times, nobody ever talks about that. Sometimes people just, they just stop fucking with the situation and they just move on. They they make it seem like you you gotta just deal with it and finally have that break and then come out on the other side and talk to someone. And, but Saul ain't doing that right now. Who knows what'll happen in the future? Now, what's dope about this whole episode is it was doing to us what Jimmy Saul just did to Kim. Why? It begins with Chuck and Jimmy karaoke and we see like this i mean this is the closest we've ever seen them since they've been on this show i mean love is love they fucking you know what i mean on some karaoke shit facts okay and then we see the moment of jimmy at his tombstone and you realize oh it's a hustle <laughs> right it's a hustle but and then he goes to kim's car and you realize none of that touched him. That was the thing. I'm thinking, okay, him being at the gravestone, though, it's, it's going to touch him at some point, right? None of that touched him. No, he felt nothing from that. Like, the, his response, like, yeah, Howard chose a good one. Like, that was the first time he had saw it. Okay. So Kim give a little, like, serious look, but it wasn't nothing out of ordinary. ordinary. Why? Because she, she's known how he's been dealing with it. Like I said, she had read that letter for him basically my man was eating cereal he didn't give a fuck about that letter okay that's what was another thing i was like i'll get to that because like i said they were doing to us what jimmy and saul was doing to kim into that panel we're thinking yo the breakthrough is coming finally but that's not where the breakthrough came looking back through the whole episode this breakthrough comes with him like the, the, the biggest thing is he's not dealing with Chuck's death. In fact, I don't think that's not, that's not what fucks with him. What fucks with him is Chuck's life and how he saw Jimmy and how even in his dying days, he, he saw Jimmy in a certain way and already had his mind made up. And it's one thing if the world does that, but for Chuck to do that to Jimmy, it, so when he gave that talk to that girl, for one, Jimmy is doing that thing in the name of Chuck, okay? He had done the, all that other stuff for, for, for Chuck the, uh, uh, to try to get word out that he was trying, that he had, uh, you know, sort of come around on the idea of Chuck. I don't have a better way of wording it because that's what it sounds like to me. These, Like I said, I don't give a fuck about that panel or none of that shit. Because to me, this was horse shit. For them, they wanted him to be performative is basically what I got from that. To, to keep it real with you. So fuck them. Um, because when he kept it real, they used the words insincere, the, the people that gives the uh, recommendation. And then when he does this, then it's like, oh, okay. But anyway. So, Jimmy... He's in that room in the name of Chuck. He's watching all of these kids in there. All the ones that they had given the three they had given the scholarship to the three, you know, good candidates. And then the one bad chick, he was the only one who given her a vote. I said bad, but that's not what I meant. Right. Like the one who they deemed is not worthy. He wa he watched them do this. So think about this once again. The death is not really what's affecting Jimmy. This is not how I'm seeing it. What's really affecting him, 
even till right now, is how his brother saw him, even in until his dying day. It doesn't matter if we really, if he really altogether felt that, but it's what Chuck sees and how Chuck, excuse me, it's what Jimmy sees, how Jimmy perceives the letter and and the receiving what five thousand dollars and all that, and in a way. It almost now looking at it, it almost to him seems like a way of, yo, this motherfucker's taunting me by making me do this. All those kids, all six, you had the three, three and one. The six, when you see him and you saw him freak out and all that, he held it in and all that. But in his mind, he he would know, oh, these are the type of people who chuck. These are like Kims. Like the top three are like Chucks. The other three are like Kim's. And then that other, the, the Espinosa chick, that's like him. And so in his mind, he's like, like, think about, think about Chuck doing that to him, by the way, though. I know he probably thought he was doing something, but Jimmy has to feel a way about that. Cause he's watching a bunch of kids who, like I said, they're a bunch of Chucks. So in his mind, he's like, this is how he would think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck would think they're better than me not just chuck this sort of that law that lawyer culture because you have all those people that are on that board and then now this leads me back to that panel it's all about how they view him okay so then when he goes out he talks as that's when those chick and I, I talked about how yeah like chuck saw him and all that but it's bigger than that. That whole law community sees him that way. Kim is probably the only one, and his boy from the mailroom, are the only one in that entire law community who really fuck with Jimmy. <clears throat> now, some of it is Jimmy's fault, like him pushing that commercial. You know, like, you, you feel me? But then the others, it's like how he perceives it. Some of them really don't. Like the dude that Kim works with right now, that dude, I don't think he hates Jimmy like that or even looks down on Jimmy. I, I feel like he just thinks he's eccentric or something like that. Like, he don't, I don't, like, Kim's partner, the dude who, uh, what's it, Schweikert? I don't, I never, I don't really get that from him. But it, to Jimmy, what else can you tell him when he's in a room full of these people and uh, they had another vote and they like, nah, not her. He's like, yeah, they feel that way about me. I'm sitting amongst all these people who feel that way about me also. Chimp with a machine gun. Okay. Then that panel at the end. Okay. We have all these people look down on him. Now go back to that point. After he talks to the chick and he goes in his car and he turns on the car and he's not working. It's not working. Remember that car has always been a symbol. That has always been a symbol. The same way that white caddy is the saw symbol. That car he's in is a symbol. It takes so much to get started. It's not dependable. It's how everyone sees sees him because look at that car right he's a lawyer but they see him in driving something like that they don't think that way then when he had the company car with uh davis and Maine, okay it's something different but so jimmy i know a bunch of people gonna disagree with me on this but you know uh but jimmy he uh it was one of those things where that was the moment where he broke and i'm i couldn't figure out exactly what it was but I still think, yeah, it's not about Chuck's death at this moment. It's about how Chuck and his relationship was. And that's uh that's a mature vision for the show. Like I said, studios have been pushing these certain narratives that you would see coming. So in our mind, the thought is, well, he's gonna come around to to the whole like how Chuck and you know and dealing with it the way we all cry and nah he's still working through yo this motherfucker really ain't fuck with me till his dying day <laughs> you know what I mean like this nigga don't fuck with me and y'all don't fuck with me so he goes to the panel and he says everything he says now Kim is finally thinking she's seeing that breakthrough finally she wanted him to talk to somebody and all that so you see the tears so did you see the look on her face when she realized Wait, that was a hustle too? <laughs> and then my man, uh, what it, was it a DBA? <clears throat> and I'm like, wait, is it happening now? And then he said, it's all good, man. Now, I probably would have thought he said Saul Goodman, 
But uh, I have subtitles on, so it says it's all good, man. Hey, that was dope. 60 minutes on just that part. That was, to me, like this sh- this show shows itself to be a lot, a very mature. It's covering things and like it's it's detailed. Like I said, if you watch it, you you it's certain things you would have to pick up. And I understand for a lot of people would be tedious. But to see him dealing with him and Chuck's relationship more than Chuck's death. Right. And then understanding him and Chuck's relationship a lot of it is based on how Chuck saw the world and a lot of these people that he'll be surrounded by in law, they see the world in that same view. So they look at him that same way and him sort of figuring it out. Oh, if I big up Chuck, that means I'm bigging up them and this whole sort of lawyerdom. You know what I mean? I got no better word. You know, fuck it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right. But Hey, and then Kim, like the whole thing with Kim, she's like, what the fuck, <laughs> right? It's all good, man. It, okay. Now, yo, I can't believe I spent 17 minutes on that. Let's go to Mike and Ziegler. Yo, Ziegler. As I said, I didn't feel sorry for him. He signed up for it. And in the same way with Gail, I didn't really feel like... Like Gail was it as it could happen when you're around them type of people, dog. If you do anything in a black market, a motherfucker have a bad day and just kill you. If you in a if you in a market like that, dog, you cannot play. And for he was so naive in a way that it's like, dog, you understood what was going on. These. They're like, no, there's not even a hint of, well, I didn't really get the situation. These guys had enough money to just build y'all a situation <laughs> with refreshments and that'll last you forever and, and cameras watching you 24 seven and seats and movies and all this. You go to a strip club and the strip club is cleared out just for y'all. And, and we got to keep this on the hush and we can't go nowhere. He understood. And I, but notice I say all this, I'm not rejecting his humanity. I'm not saying he, he shouldn't feel that way. It's just, Okay, he felt that way, and now there's consequences to it. You, you, you joined some shit like that, man. They cannot play about that, and they will not play about that. And this, how crazy it is. We saw Mike still at that moment. Still, this is how important this moment is because we're seeing Mike in a way. You know, his he usually has like a steely resolve, like it's. But at that moment, right there, my man. Uh, hey, there's another way. He's like, yeah, I know that's how you feel. Wait right there. Right? Because Gus can't play about that. And Mike knows that also. But then Mike is like, all right, let me do it. Because Mike, he has an honor like that. But I will say, they he can't play like And then... He talked to Lalo like that, like Eduardo, like he, that motherfucker is a, is a scumbag. <laughs> I just, yo, when that dude hopped up into the ceiling and it just came down, I was like, you son of a bitch. And then he killed the old dude who had worked there. Like he, he's going to be interested to see the, in the next season, but Mike popping him Right. And then them cutting to Gail. I'm watching it and watching it. And then it hits me <laughs> but because my mind was going through like this. This is how my mind worked in like a split second. It went, oh, shit, Gail. Oh, shit. Yeah, he used to work there. Yeah. Think about how that feels to all this in a split second. Think about how this feels that he's there ground floor. And then you have a guy like Walt, who's even more of a beast uh, show up there. And of course, by the time he meets Walt, Walt is like already right. Like early on, him and Walt are, I won't say similar, but they on a similar wavelength. By the time he meets Walt, though, by the time he meets Walt, it, it's not that way, right? Like Walt, Walt's a different type of guy. But like when we first meet Walt, him and Gail are a lot more similar, right? And so all of this is going through my head. <laughs> and then I go, man, it's damn shame he got killed. 
And then it hit me like, oh, shit. <laughs> right? That was a tragic one with Zegler. It was tragic, even though I'm saying, yo, it was his fault. That doesn't stop it from being tragic, but that was his fault. Um, Like, even the fact that the, his last conversation with his wife was that. <laughs> like, that's fucked up. But that's how it ended up. And then the Gale dude... Right, the same thing. He's like, "Fuck, dog." And I remember thinking, "Damn, that's fucked up." But because the next season starts, and you know, uh, you know, the cameras face, blah blah blah, and you just see him laying on. But anyway, yeah, yo, yo, that was a good, good episode, and uh, I like the way it went. And then even down to Gus. And Mike are not even worried about Lalo. That's how funny that is. Because it's like funny of a character as he is. And as more as I want to see him and see them explore. It's like they shouldn't be worried about him. Because by the time. Well, I don't know. Let me not say that. But by the time we see them. It ain't like they set up shop someplace different or nothing like that. So we know they they won. They got him out the fucking paint. We gonna, I'm going to see how. Right? Hey. Dope dope episode man to see that jimmy was still hustling it was like man they want that horse shit i'll give it to them because they don't fuck with me no way and then to see mike having to make those decisions with a guy that he connected with right but he's in the line of work that he's in and he knows the real he that man was too sloppy to zygla dude that was his second time doing something like talking to somebody about the type of shit they're doing. And this time it was even more egregious, right? Hey, dope episode next season.